So God gives us the scripture, the word of God, in order to teach us. So we can have doctrine. It's there to correct us. How many recognize from time to time we need to be corrected? Not always comfortable. We don't always like it. But thank God I want to grow and improve in the things of God. And as the word is given for instruction. Holy Spirit inspired, Holy Spirit breathed instruction. Praise God. As you're seated, open your Bible at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And we've, this is now part four. So we've spent a lot of time having a look at a number of different things. Number one is that God is three distinct persons even though He's declared as one in the Spirit. We know that He is Father, God, as a person. Then there's another person, His Son, Jesus Christ. And of course, the third person, the Holy Spirit. This is revealed at Jesus' baptism. When the heavens open, the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus, and we hear the Father's voice from heaven, and we see Jesus standing there, and the Holy Spirit descending upon Him. And that's the Godhead revealed. And you see that through many parts of the Scripture. Here we see, once again, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, person one. And then we see the love of God, person two, the Father, who is love. And then three, the grace and the communion, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. The Holy Spirit is a person, very distinct person. Not just the power, not just some kind of force of God. He is the third person of the Godhead. And I find that a lot of people struggle in their Christian walk simply because they may be aware of the Holy Spirit, but not aware of who He is as a person and what His role is in their life. And here we see Paul revealing it when he says the communion of the Holy Spirit. Communion. The word used there is koinonia. It's uh, in the New Living Translation. It says fellowship. Now, fellowship is more, as I said before, than just sitting, talking to someone over a cup of coffee. This is an intimate fellowship, intimate relationship. And it's knowing that the Holy Spirit's with you all the time. In other words, He's your closest friend, your closest ally. In other words, you will never be alone ever again in your life. Even if your physical body is the only one in the room, you are not alone. God is with you. Never have to be afraid again. You, you know, I'm not afraid as long as i got my dad with me. Uh, you have the Holy Spirit with you, who's more powerful than any person could ever be. And if we learn to believe that and trust Him and know He's there, we'll see more of what He is, who He is in our lives manifesting. And so we've been having a look at that. Even Jesus said in John 5 verse 19 that he of himself can do nothing. But then he said in John chapter 16 verse 5, he goes away and then he says down in verse 7, he says, it's to your advantage I go away. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. And if we read in context that help is talking about the Holy Spirit, verse 12 I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, notice, not it, when He, the person, the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into how much? All truth. For He will not speak of His own authority. Whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. That's your future. Lift your hand and say, God has sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within me so that He will guide me into all truth and show me my future. How many of you would like to know what's going to happen tomorrow so you can prepare for it? I mean, wouldn't you want to know that uh, just before you, uh, maybe you invested in the in the stock market and that particular company that you put so much money into, wouldn't you like to know that it's about to close and the stock's going to dump in a week's time and you can sell out today at maximum profit? Yeah. Wouldn't that be good to know? Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to know that before you get married that this is the one that God's called for you to have? 
So you're not destined for a lifetime of sadness and misery? Amen. Wouldn't you like to know what your spouse needs? Man, this is my secret to marriage success. Have you noticed that uh, you, you try and put together a manual. Don't say this at this time. Don't speak to that one. Don't do this. And you kind of, come on, any men with me here today? And you draw up a list. And just when you think you got the list right, <laughs> you wake up one day and it's all changed. <laughs> oh, how have you ever had that happen? Yeah, but, but I was, no, that was then. Oh, so now it's time also. And it's the seasons matter. And, <laughs> and how you realize it's just... It's like uh, uh, the book that you saw, I saw one day that it says, What Men Know About Women. You open it up and it's all blank pages. <laughs> so I learned the secret. God the Father knows his daughter better than me. And when she wakes up, he knows exactly what she needs that day. All I need to do is spend time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And he will reveal to you, no, don't go near that subject today. And you say, okay, Lord, I hear you, and I will obey you. No matter how much my mouth wants it, I've learned to trust the Holy Spirit. And it works, doesn't it, darling? <laughs> so, it's good to know the future, that you have the Holy Spirit guiding you. And he's there to help you in every, you never have to make, worry about a decision ever again. Hallelujah. He'll tell you things to come. Now remember last time we had a look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, that it's profitable for, doctrine for, reproof for, correction for, instruction in righteousness. Why? So that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, for every good work. How many of you want to be thoroughly equipped for what God's called you to do? So God gives us the Scripture, the Word of God, in order to teach us. So we can have doctrine. It's there to correct us. How many recognize from time to time we need to be corrected? It's not always comfortable. We don't always like it. But thank God, I want to grow and improve in the things of God. And as the Word is given for instruction, Holy Spirit inspired Holy Spirit breathed instruction. And so, yeah, we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. God has prepared things for you that even if I knew it, I wouldn't be able to speak it to you in English. It's just outside of this world. This is more than just a promotion in a company. It's more than just an increase. It's more than finding the right house. There are things that God wants to reveal to you that no man will be able to speak to you using a human language. There are not words to describe what God has prepared for you. But God has revealed them to us. How? Through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. Amen. Family of God, I really want to emphasize that today. We got a lot of voices speaking to us around in the world. And the world has shifted in what they believe. What obviously was sin just 50 years ago is now being written into legislation as legal, as right. And we must understand that there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is death. And the only way we're going to know truth is not to listen to the majority voices in the world today because the world is majority in sin. So we got sinful people telling us what's right or wrong. Telling preachers what they can and can't say from a pulpit. People who don't even know Jesus are trying to declare doctrine. Redefine what marriage is. 
when God's already spoken clearly what marriage is. We do not redefine marriage. Well, that was back then. That's an old book, you know. This is not an old manuscript. This is not something we found in a cave, some old... No, this is the conscript of heaven. It is the constitution of heaven. Men wrote it down on earthly pages, but it's existed for eternity. And when all the law books of the earth are wiped out, when governments that have thought they are powerful have been wiped out over history, history will repeat again. Governments that thought they were strong will be wiped out again. And according to the prophecy given to Daniel, at the end of the day, when the rock of Jesus Christ comes, all nations will be crushed and brought low. Only one nation stays, and it's the nation of God. And so when every law ever written by man, every legislation ever written by man is wiped away, the constitution of heaven, the Word of God, will still be yes and amen for all eternity. And so instead of looking to man, how I should and should not be doing things, I need to be going to the Word of God. Allow the Word to speak to me. Amen. Say amen. amen. So we've not received the Spirit of the world. The Spirit is from God. Why? So that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now, these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual Comparing spiritual. spiritual things with? So I don't decide what I believe by looking at the world's physical system. When the world says this is how we should and should not do anything, I don't look at that. If I'm going to make a spiritual decision, it has to be based on spiritual truth. And only the Holy Spirit can reveal that spirit of truth to you. I can only introduce you to the Holy Spirit. I can show you what the Word says in its written form. But the voice of the Holy Spirit only you can hear for yourself. John chapter 14 verse 26. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you how many? He'll teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So that's why we come together like this. So we can hear the word of God. So that you have the seed of the word. But seed is necessary to produce the harvest, the food. So you receive the seed of the word. For example, today on a Sunday, I'm giving you what the word says about the Holy Spirit. But that seed enters into your heart. Now, the Holy Spirit will remind you. When you're listening for Him and you're about to make a decision, He will remind you, remember this was said. Remember that was said. And He will guide you into the truth. Before you make a decision that will lead you into error, the Holy Spirit will always bring you to your attention. Learn to become very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Learn to become very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I would rather, you know, sometimes people say, but how do I know if it's God or not? If, if you believe it's God and go with it. Because sometimes people are worried. Like, like if, if God, they, hear, they sense God saying, you should not do that. But they really want to do it. But they hear, don't do it. They think, but what if that's not God? Because then I'm going to miss out. I would rather miss out. And even if I get to heaven and say, God says, that really wasn't me telling you that. Well, at least you know I obeyed you. My desire was to obey you. Amen. That's what I've seen happen. That if, I, if God leads me to do something, and even though it's not Him saying to do, to do it or not do it, by me obeying, it counts as obedience. It counts as obedience. You getting this? Yes. Remember when, when Abraham lied about his wife being his sister? Yes. And then the king found out God was going to get on the king's case. You got another man's wife. He says, where from? Abraham. He didn't tell me that. Yes. 
And God says, in the integrity of your heart, I've not judged you. Because you didn't know you were doing wrong, I'm not holding that against you. But you give him his wife back. Oh, you, you see what I'm saying? So you understand that your desire to obey is counted as obedience. So learn that. That'll help a lot of people. So the Holy Spirit is guiding you into truth. Now, with that in mind, keeping the fact that, that Scripture is given by God, all Scripture, I want to have a look at prayers that were revealed through Paul that he prayed by the Holy Spirit. Pray, I call them prayers of the Spirit. Uh, I've studied them out. I've read them many times. And I've made them into personal prayers that I pray over you every day. So as we study it, you can know this was prayed over you today. And you can put it into the first person and pray it over yourself as well. Have a look at Colossians chapter 1. How many of you want to know what the Holy Spirit's telling you? Three, four, five. Okay, some of you are still turning in your Bible. Okay. How many of you would like to know what your future is? You want to hear and walk in truth. You want to make sure you don't make error, no matter what, whether it's legal or not in the country. You want to make sure you do it right according to the kingdom of God. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Now there's two things I want to make note of you. When you see the word pray, it's not that he suggests or he thinks or he would like it. Because by the own teaching of Paul, he said that the only way you can pray is by faith. And that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And only when we pray in faith does God hear us. And only what He hears, He will answer. So if someone says pray, it has to be a prayer by faith. So what we're about to read is faith, which means that whatever Paul is saying here, he has heard it from the Word of God. Secondly, by Paul writing it and written into Scripture, means it's Holy Spirit inspired. These are Holy Spirit-inspired written prayers. See, we can make prayers up. But if you find a prayer that the Holy Spirit inspired, you know you're praying exactly according to the will of God. So, what we're about to read is this is how the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to pray for his partners. And he says, do not cease to pray for you. And this is what he does. He asks that you are filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Listen again. He asks that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will. The knowledge of His will. And wisdom and spiritual understanding. Keep your marker here. Have a look at Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah 11. Now, this is a prophetic word spoken about the believer of the new covenant. He says in verse 1, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. Who's that talking about? That's Jesus. He's prophesying Jesus coming out of Jesse. That'll be then David and down the lineage. Jesus is born. And what will happen? The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Well, that's what we saw at the baptism. When he came out the waters of baptism, what happened? The Holy Spirit came upon him. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. Now listen to who he is. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now when we say the fear of the Lord, we understand we're not talking about fear as in scared of a hungry lion. Remember the word says in... 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given us a 
spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So we've not been given a spirit of fear. That's a demon. Family, normal fear, when I talk about fear as a human understands fear, when you're scared of something, like, you know, something's about to eat you or run at you or bite you or whatever, that, that fear feeling, that is a demonic fear. And God has not given you a spirit of fear. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like walking around with demons in my pocket. I don't want a demon on a leash. I don't want a demon hanging near me. Demons must run. When I walk down the road, listen, when you walk down the road, you must be so full of the presence of God that demons are scattering. They are diving to get out of your way. I don't want to tolerate any demons. I've heard it said from a pulpit, you should embrace your fears. And I thought, what? Embrace a demon. Hug your demon. No, I'm not about to hug a demon. Fear will not be tolerated. There's a difference between fear and respect. I will respect a lion. If he eats anything that runs, I ain't running. And I will make sure I stay away from him. It's like when you go on a game drive, they tell you, sit down, don't stand, because if you stand, you cut the skyline, and they see a change, then they think there's something different there. Can, but if you stay on the vehicle, they see one vehicle. I sit. <laughs> That's not fear. I have a life to live, and I've got words to preach, and I've got a family to look after. I've got things to do. And I'm not going to be stupid for stupid sake. That's not fear. Are you with me? That's why I can, when I go scuba dive, I will, the first question, whenever I scuba dive, the first thing people, every, every time I scuba dive, what about the sharks? <laughs> there again, the shark is one of the most misunderstood animals. Uh, if you're down under with a shark, you are not food. There's lots of, there's lots of other little fish flying around. They're all, all flying, swimming around. All over. But you are safe. Yeah. Now, I know that people still look at me in disbelief. But I'm not afraid. But I do respect. I keep my distance. I don't touch. If they swing, I get out their way. It's their water. Are you with me? But I'm not saying that. Why? Because I won't tolerate the fear. No fear. No fear. I said no fear. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Once the Holy Spirit had come, now the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the healing, delivering people was happening. God wants to do the same in and through our lives. He wants to anoint us with power to do His will. Family, the moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit entered you bodily. In this series, Alan Bagg takes us on this journey to cultivate an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. You'll discover the secret to the success of Jesus' ministry. You will learn the importance of being intimate with the Holy Spirit. And you will discover the areas that God is restoring in the lives of those who are part of His kingdom. You're going to see great power flowing through you. And as we learn to be intimate with the Holy Spirit, we're going to see many, many multitudes getting saved. Purchase your series and get in contact with us here at allenbagministries.org. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Christians begin to pray. Just before we leave today, I want to make sure that everybody here is in a right relationship with Jesus. I know many of us have been through many challenges and we struggle with life. Things have happened. Every one of us have sinned. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And here's the important thing to know. God will judge us one day, but at this moment in time, He's not holding our sin against us. Why? Because Jesus died for that sin. He's not blaming us for that sin. But He will call us to account on it. But until that time comes, He's giving us the opportunity. Sometimes people struggle with 
religion, struggle to go to church because I don't know, will God accept me after all I've done? Here's the good news. Jesus already died for you. That's how much He loves you. He's proved that. He went to hell and paid the price for your sin. And then He rose from the dead and today is alive, proving that you've been forgiven. All you have to do right now is believe that. The Bible says if you believe with your heart, that Jesus is raised from the dead, and then you confess with your mouth that He's your Savior, you saved. That's all it takes. You can do that right now. So don't put it off one more moment. Make that decision today. I'm going to lead you in that prayer right now and say this out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me, and then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you Lord. You're my Savior. Right now, I'm born again, a child of God. From this day on, I live to serve you, to worship you. One day, I will leave this earth and stand before you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again. Welcome to the family. Congratulations to all of those that gave their life to the Lord today. If that was you that made that amazing decision, please go to our website and give us your details. We have an awesome free gift that we'd like to get to you from my mom and dad. And in that gift, it will help you build your faith and help you in your walk with God today. Now, if you have been enjoying this amazing teaching from my dad, there is so much more available. So you can go and make your way to our website and you can purchase for yourself this whole entire series, Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And you can learn more about the benefits of what it is to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Joshua Bagg. You were watching Wisdom for Life. Remember, Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life. Visit Alan Bag Ministries online. At allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. Through the grace of God, Alan Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Yeah.